Now, welcome staff and those who are listening in. Our first guest speaker in the public forum is Nigel Spelling from the Alexandra Blossom Festival. And I'm just still waiting for Anna to return. Just coming. I remind everybody in our public forum and we will be sticking to it. <coughs> Meeting has started. Yeah, the meeting has started. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's not statue at all. She's having a chat with her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Thank you, Martin. Um, afternoon. All. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to uh, come along and, and speak to the Vincent Community Board. Um, unfortunately, today um, I can't come here and, and say that we had a wonderful, fantastic Blossom Festival because um, as you'll all be too well aware, COVID uh, put paid to that and we had to make the very difficult decision to um, cancel the event. Um, this has, has meant and, and why I'm here today, um, hopefully you would have seen our, our letter, um, but was want, wishing to make a request on behalf of the, the Blossom Festival Committee to be able to retain the $26,000 grant that we received for this year's uh, event. Uh, with having to cancel the, the Blossom Festival this year, uh, it has meant that we have um, looking at facing an estimated loss for the year of approximately $63,500. Um, this is if we have to repay the, the grant to the, um, the Vincent Community Board. Um, we've looked quite tightly at our, at our numbers for the year, um, and although the festival didn't go ahead, we still do incur significant costs over the, over the year um, in the way of event management and also administration costs, so that's where the, the loss is, is coming from. Um, so what we're looking, as I say, a request today is that we are able to retain that grant that we received for 26,000 to <laughs> offset and minimise part of the losses that we are looking to incur um, this year. Does anyone have any, any questions on that? Nigel, thank you. There don't seem to be. Yeah. Oh, yes, Anna. Sorry. Yes, I do. I was being patient. Um, yeah, Nigel, thank you for coming along via screen. Um, just a question on your proposed smaller <coughs> event that you said you haven't got the details for, and I appreciate that this might be asking details that you don't have, but you said there was $10,000 set aside for a smaller event later in the year. Is there an opportunity with that event to um, uh, gain revenue? Uh, at this point in time, we're still working through the, the budget um, for that event. Um, given COVID alert levels and where they currently sit, uh, we haven't been able to firm anything at, at this point in time. Um, the idea behind the event was that it would be a thank you to the community. Um, you know, it wasn't meant to be a 65th festival this year. Um, it wasn't going to be a big party in the park like the um, usual Blossom Festival is. It was more of a, a bit of a celebration to still acknowledge um, the community uh, and the, we weren't looking to um, charge for that that event. It was more, as I say, a, a bit of a thank you to the community. It's all had a pretty tough, tough year um, and try to put something as a bit of a highlight onto the, <coughs> the end of the year. But as I say, at this point in time, COVID alert levels where they sit, um, we still haven't been able to confirm a date for that. We're working through that as a as a committee. Mm -hmm. And just um, seeking clarification around your obligation with your major funder for, I'm trying to think of the terminology, putting putting funds back into the community by way of injecting into a project. 
Well, is there an obligation to do that this year, considering that the um, festival hasn't gone ahead? Uh, we are still working through that one as well, but at this stage, it's um, we'll have to have discussions with them around what we're looking to do. Um, but the COVID uncertainty has put um, a lot of our decisions that we're looking to make on on hold, and as a committee, we're still working through that one um, as well at this point in point in time. Um, but it's it's been very difficult. COVID um, threw a big spanner in the works around. Uh, the event this year, and it has meant that we're having to go back and relook at everything, and and also our um, finances for next year's event, um, which we're working on with our budget, um, and this does make quite a large dent in in our um, reserves for for next year's event. I appreciate that. Thank you. Just uh, yeah, Nigel. Um, just a question. At the moment, uh, the question seems to be either. Uh, repay all or not. Um, I'm just wondering your views on a halfway house in that um, scenario. Um, well, you know, we'd be open to, to looking at, at that definitely because, um, you know, anything that the, the community board is able to do to help um, the Blossom Festival and, and minimising those losses for the year would be greatly appreciated. Um, you know, if that's something that the community board would be willing to do, then we'd be, um, you know, that would be fantastic. Um, it's, you know, as I say, this is where we sit at the moment. We're looking at that $63,000 loss without the VCB uh, grants. So uh, any contribution towards minimising those losses would be um, much appreciated. And, and, you know, as I've said, we do appreciate the support of the, the Vincent Community Board. Thank you. Nice. Quick, quick one. Yep. Um, has the Rainy Day Trust been approached given they're set up to hold funds for extraordinary events? I don't know where I couldn't find their trustee, but um, yeah, whether they've been approached? Uh, no approach has been made to them at this point in time. Uh, we're just working through each option um, at this stage. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Nigel. Our next um, guest is Ray White, and he's not here. He was going to phone in. He's not here. He's so not here. We move on to Roy. We'll move, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to Roy Noble. Oh, Roy Noble. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Roy, okay. the Yes, welcome. Yes, yes, it's the power line man again. Yeah. Hello, um, um, this is just a very, very quick up, update on our um, project. Um, today we began stage um, two. Um, that's to complete the piece of string between um, Galloway Road and Earnsclue. That's about a 12 and a half kilometre long section. Um, so it's actually through Alexandra basically, um, through all the lifestyle blocks plus the um, pines. Um, we dropped about 40 odd people into Alexandra um, over the weekend. Uh, you probably saw anyone out there today who was um, going along the main street, quite a few vehicles. Um, we had an, an, an induction this morning, so um, that went really, really um, well. Um, Parts of the job are through the publicly accessible areas. Um, last month we did flyer drops and also um, knocked on um, doors for all the properties through the pines and adjacent to all those. Um, we have been also talking to community groups, um, for example, the Rail Trail, Trail Operators Group, um, Charitable Trust, the Equestrian Community, Four Wheel Drives, Mountain biking club, walking clubs, and also and also area clubs to ad, ad advise them of the works as as well. Um, CODC staff have also been helping us out. Um, they have been putting out information on the um, social media of the um, council. That's been awfully helpful. Um, things you'll see very, very soon are going to be structures going up, um, which include um, include a big um, scaffolded hurdle at, at the highway heading out of town towards Clyde. Uh, we've began dropping off 
um, um, gear there. Um, and we'll put containers over the rail trail down on Galloway Road, which will be brought up to Dunstan as we get close to that piece. We have got work going on for about the next four and a half to five weeks. Once that is completed, that'll complete the full section of line between Roxburgh and no, and um, Aisby. And then we move up to the Danzies Pass area in um, January. Just finally from the Transpower Community Care Fund, um, which is a fund which, um, which charities can apply to. Um, the last um, round of awardees in the Vincent area um, were that we funded the Pullburn Moa Creek um, um, Community Hall Internet um, Connection. We have given $20,000 to the Alexandra BMX Club. And um, for the CODC, um, we have funded $34,000 for a um, kitchen and bathroom renovation at the um, Clyde um, um, Hall. So those have only just been awarded um, and there should be some press on those reasonably soon. Um, so that's about us. As I said, we're around for the next four and a half to five weeks odd. OK, thank you. Any questions, members? They're not being, Roy, I did notice um, Look like every Toyota in the South Island was parked down Central Avenue this morning, <laughs> going past. Um, we wish you and your team well, and um, hopefully the weather gods will be kind and you can finish on time and under budget. Uh, we're slightly ahead of time and under budget at the moment, so that's handy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sounds good. News. Thank you. Thank you. See Thanks. you. Joining us on the screen is Adrian Morgan from the Fargo. Country Cricket Association. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so hi, Adrian you. Morgan. Hi there. Can you everyone hear me? All good. All good. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, joining you. I'm district manager for Tau Country Cricket, and I'm approaching the um, district council for assistance with funding for a electronic scoreboard at Monu Park. Uh, so cricket at Monterey Park has been a bit of a fixture for over 30 years. The first um, first class match was back in 1978-79 and since then it's been a regular feature on the fixture list for cricket. Um, and to ensure that uh, the stadiums are up to uh, a minimum standard uh, for, for holding those sort of matches, uh, New Zealand cricket uh, send out a, a warrant of fitness uh, for each of the stadiums so you have to meet certain criteria and We've been working with the council and uh, Otago Cricket over the years to do things like upgrading the changing rooms at Monu Park and completing a cricket pitch uh, renovation, which we did in, in 2020. So the next requirement um, on the on the um, list from New Zealand Cricket for achieving the warrant of fitness is really to have a electronic scoreboard at the ground um, to display some minimum um, information about you know the scores at the ground so that spectators um, can see what's going on so what we uh, uh in the past we have hired um a scoreboard in the last season we did that on a couple of occasions it cost the targo country cricket association ten thousand dollars to hire that just for those games which is really not sustainable for us and i think long term we would be better as a community to invest in one ourselves um, so we're recommending procuring a, a electronic scoreboard to display not just the information for cricket, but also to be able to be um, something that's a valuable community asset, which would assist us with attracting not only cricket games, but um, a whole lot of other events such as um, high level rugby um, and any other sort of events like the, um, the, the Pioneer and things like that, that you would be able to use an electronic screen for. Um, so it would be able to show 
uh, video replays, decision reviews, um, motion graphics, and also advertising as well. Uh, the, the screen would, I really think, would assist with Monty Park as a sporting venue. Um, it would help deliver a high quality experience for participants and spectators across multiple sports and give kids in the area um, the ability to go and see their, their heroes. So what we're proposing is to put on a um, some LED lightweight LED panels across the existing school board structure. There would be 20 metres squared um, and it would be visible from any part of the ground. We've achieved, uh, we've obtained quotes from a number of suppliers, but the, the preferred suppliers from Monster Vision and they've estimated that the cost of the panels would be $65,000 and the installation about $13,000. Uh, we have obtained funding recently from Central Lakes Trust uh, and we have also um, obtained funding from Otago Cricket and our own contribution. So we have secured $40,000 toward the project. The project all up would be $100,000 and we are asking the council for assistance with $25,000 um, to contribute towards that. And um, if we are short, we've also approached um, a number of other funders as well of yet, uh, yet, yet to hear from. But um, our, our sort of fallback option is also to approach the council to see if we could get um, obtain a loan, which we would be able to pay off through our ongoing um, operational budget. We were expecting to be able to um, obtain funding uh, via or revenue via advertising um, using the screen um, for different fixtures that are at, at the venue. Um, so thank you for considering our, our application and if anyone has questions, um, I'm happy to take them. Members, questions? I guess uh, one question, uh, why don't you, or is it, is a combination between Otago Country, Otago Cricket and New Zealand Cricket, have they an ability to pay for it in any case? Uh, they have put forward a contribution, as I mentioned earlier, towards um, purchasing the screen. Otago Cricket um, has, has given us $10,000 towards the project, but they aren't reluctant to pay for the whole, um, for the, the full cost. Well, they're not going to pay and for the I cost. See Right, OK, and I see that site screens is also on on a sort of wish list for a warrant of fitness. Yeah, site screens is also, I mean, having a, a top level venue, there's things that you need to work on over time and the priority is an electronic um, screen. Uh, site screens are something that we would be looking at down the track, but the ones that we, we have at the moment are sufficient for the job that they do. Um, there are probably limitations in the, the size of them, and we have to have volunteers available to be able to to move them and things like that. But we can we can do that um, currently, and they they still meet only only just, but they still meet the Warren Fitness standard. Oh, sorry, Anna. Just one question, Adrian. Thanks for coming and sharing today. Um, I just had a question around some of those other organisations who also use that space, is there any indication of support from them to help fund the project? Um, there's not indication of support to fund it, I think, and we're not, we haven't actually asked them to fund it. We've got support verbally from them um, in terms of the concept, uh, athletics and rugby, for example, see obvious benefits. Um, we haven't asked them for funding towards it. Um, we're trying to source the funding ourselves, um, and I think ultimately they will see the benefits of, of it when it's there and will probably contribute towards funding it by, for example, hiring it or using it um, uh, when it's available. Okay. Also, sorry, can I just extend that? So the ownership of the screen would be Otago Country Cricket? That's right. So it would be owned by and us. So you would we would we would, would hire it out, it. yeah, and we would drive an in income from it from advertising. So, for example, we've lost your sound. Uh 
We've lost my sound. Oh, you bet. Yeah. You bet. My, okay. Sorry, answering your question, Anna. We would, or the screen would be, uh, is owned by Otago Country Cricket, and we would um, let other codes use it, but in the cost of hiring out to them would be covered by advertising revenue from, say, their advertisers that that we would take a share of that to cover our costs. Thanks. Any further questions, members? There not being any. Adrian, thank you. And our next guest is Tony Lepper. Hi, Tony, welcome. Hello, everybody hear me? Yep, testing yep. one, two, three, we've got you. Cheers, mate. Good, very All good. Cool. Um, I won't be too long. Um, for those of you who don't know me, Tony Lepera, I'm a director of the Ernst Clue Irrigation Company, have been for 30 years, and um, I've lived in Ernst Clue a hell of a lot longer than that. Um, this application might be a bit different for the Vincent Community Board, so I'm just going to give you a bit of flavour, all the information's in your agenda. Um, so my property backs onto the Fraser River. And, you know, in the old days, it used to horrify me when the irrigation company took all that water out of the river for irrigation and it was bone dry. But since 2000, um, we've, our company has maintained a minimum flow in that river of one cumic. It's usually actually more than that. And because of that, the Fraser has returned to something which is probably even better than its natural state, because it's in its natural state, it would drop to about um, 450 litres a second. But as we say, we keep it above 1,000 litres a second. Um, Ernst Clue Irrigation has appointed itself, self-appointed as a guardian of the river. Um, and because of my job working for the company and where I live, I get to see all the people who use the river and it's mainly fishermen and there's not really that um, many of them. But the demise of the camping ground and the Fraser Domain and the reserve there, fewer and fewer people seem to be taking advantage of this, um, of the recreational opportunities that we see in the river. Um, so Ernst Clue Irrigation as a company, we've decided we'd like to open up the access to the river. Um, and we're thinking of ways of, of um, enhancing the experience that you would get if you could get in beside that river. And one way of doing that is planting natives along the banks and opening up walking and maybe even biking access. But at this stage, we're thinking walking access. Um, and you may ask why Ernst Clue is doing this and why not DOC or Fish and Game or the Regional Council? Um, and they are all organisations that would benefit from a project like this. Well, the irrigation company is taking on the task um, because we're made up of 130 members um, who all own land here. Um, we all, most of us, back onto the river, and um, we owe a debt to that river for our businesses that um, we we generate out of the water that comes from the river. Um, so we feel like we've got a debt to the river. Um, so with the Vincent Community Board's help, we could make this project happen quite quickly. Um, we could open up access and people's enjoyment of the river. Um, if you don't support us, um, we'll just quietly work, it, work away on our plans. It'll take a long, long time, and I'll probably be the only one that gets to enjoy the natural amenity. Um, and I know that there are competing, competing demands for your money, but in a project like this, you get more than dollar for dollar for your money. Um, you indirectly get to help the trust that grows the trees because we'd be buying the trees from your local trust who's on your agenda today. And you get something that lasts forever and will be maintained forever because um, the work of looking after those trees, um, keeping the access open, that all just gets built into Ernst Clue's work program and the staff do it, you know, forever and ever into the future. So we think this is a great way of um, highlighting biodiversity in Central Otago, getting access to a wonderful river for fishermen and anyone else who want to go and have a look. That's me. Questions, members? Yep, I've got a question. 
Tony, thank you for coming along and sharing. Um, I just have a question and I can't remember if I saw it or not, so I guess I'm just seeking clarification. Was there a biodiversity value done on the live things in the river? I'm thinking your critters. I remember you mentioning um, trout spawning up the river, but I'm wondering, is there galaxids or um, is there freshwater craze up there? Okay, look, Ern's Clue's done in my time on the board, maybe five, five or six biological surveys of that river. Um, we've got ongoing commitments to do biological surveys. Um, what you'll find is that there's both forms of trout. Um, there's some cora in it. There's, um, there's belief that lamprey have been in and out. Um, we don't know, we've never caught a lamprey, but they leave pheromones and apparently one of the pheromone tests detected a lamprey at some stage. Um, but because of the trout, the galaxids are a bit scarce, all right? Um, mm -hmm. Trout's like eating them. Mm, they do. Cool, thank you. So they're ongoing, we keep doing those. Yeah, nice. But you've got to remember mm -hmm. that our river took a bit of a hit of Lagra siphon. So it's taken even some of that trout, in my opinion, spawning country away from us a bit. Thank you, Tony. No problems. You guys have a really good afternoon. <laughs> Next down the blocks, that's uh, Marnie Kelly. Laura Clyde. Hello, Marnie. Welcome. Hello. Hello, Martin. And the rest of the forum. I'm going to have to read mine. So, um, kia ora. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, at present, the entrance, entrances into Clyde from the State Highway consist of a mishmash of many signs, including a very outdated welcome to Clyde sign. Our group members agreed that Clyde needs a new image and that that will be, that will be unique and recognisable. So we've chosen a sculpture of the Kauriaria, New Zealand's native falcon, which is also represented on Central Otago's World of Difference signage. The sculpture will be positioned on contact energy land, which has a large adjacent car park and for which we have received verbal approval for a license to occupy. We need to move, we needed to move the sculpture from the original rocky outcrop because of the distance from a car park. And as we have had advice that approval from Waka Kotahi could have been difficult to gain because of its close proximity to the highway. Council have confirmed that Waka Kotahi consent will not be required for this new site. The site is on the large grassy mound between the highway and the side road that goes down to the Dairy Creek boat ramp. Repositioning the sculpture has meant that it needs to be on a three to four metre pole, reflecting a price rise to $74,000 from the original price of $65,000 inclusive of GST, 65,000 being construction, engineering, installation, and 9,000 for the old steel gold mining sluicing pipe for mounting, plus a substantial concrete foundation. The sculptor's engineer's producer statement will outline the stability and strength of the works necessary for public siting. There will be minimum maintenance costs due to the recycled nature of the materials used. We've had a positive meeting and several email exchanges with Central Otago District Council Planning Department who have agreed that the sculpture would be a great feature and would like to see it happen. We anticipate the Kariaria will be the catalyst for a sculpture trail from the new town centre down to the new walking track from Matau Street to the proposed car park and recreation area in lo local and lower miners lane. Local people who have viewed the image are wowed by it and will be excited to see it come to fruition. Fundraising. We've organised events to raise funds ourselves alongside grants and community donations. Unfortunately, we had to post postpone a planned cocktail evening and auction of donated goods to be held on the 11th of December because of possible lockdown restrictions. The new date will be in April. We have plans to hold another house and garden tour later in 2022. 
Our group has already spent many volunteer hours on this project and we hope you will see the value of this special project to Clyde. It will be Clyde's first public art piece. Nā mihi nua. Mane. Mane, um, are there other um, fundraising uh, possibilities that you can see? Uh, yes, um, we hope to hold a um, step toe auction between Christmas and New Year, uh, which will be s s auctioned and will be from donated goods. Right. Has there been any interest from um, bodies like Promote Dunstan? Uh, yes, there has. Uh, we have made uh, made inquiries, but we haven't made a formal application yet because we were a little delayed with um, permission or approval from Contact Energy, which we now have. Right, and is this is the, the sculpture exists already? No, we have to raise the funds first before the sculptor will proceed with the uh, with the manufacture. Marnie, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next, we have Kylie Nixon from the Galloway Ford. Hello, kia ora, can you hear me? We can. Perfect. Um, I'm here today to talk on behalf of the Galloway Hall Committee. I am the chairperson of the Hall Committee. I am the third generation to represent our family on the Hall Committee. Um, my grandmother actually went to the Hall as a child and then my gran grandfather was on the committee as my dad was and now me. Um, it is one of the few historical buildings left in um, Galloway. It is a community owned asset, which we are trying our best to upkeep and to have as a future proofing. Um, we come to you with an application for funding as our costs in recent years have doubled at the same time that we need to um, do some maintenance and some upkeep of the hall. Um, our insurance has doubled in recent years. Our line charges for power cost more than our power. Um, and after the 100 mils of rain that we got in December, we discovered that we need a new roof, which um, scaffolding alone is costing us just $2,000. So um, we have been raising money within our community. We ask households within Galloway for um, yearly subs. And the committee also fundraised throughout the year, giving their time and donations of their own things, such as lunches, afternoon teas, to um, raise money. Um, we've also been in recent years um, improving the environment around our hall. It's quite a barren site. Um, in the last two years, we've planted over 50 new trees and we've put in a drip irrigation system, all kindly donated from people's backyards. Um, and we're also having to now look at culling some of the poplars that have been there for over 80 years but are becoming a hazard. Um, yeah, so the Galloway Hall, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it is down on Hall Road. It is used by all um, the community out here for public gatherings, social gatherings, school camps. It's a great little asset that um, we as a community want to future-proof for future generations. So yeah, any questions? Your Worship, Kia ora Natalie, um, Kylie rather. Is the hall available for people from outside of the Galloway area? Is it generally available for hire to both um, allow bigger usage and create a uh, funding stream for the hall? Yes, we do. Um, let it to people outside of the um, Galloway area. We have a terms and conditions when you hire it. Um, we do not hire it out for 21st or teenage parties, but we hire it out to um, people for weddings and family reunions. And um, we have a vintage car club that comes every two years. So things like that, we, we open our doors for everybody. Thank you. 
Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I've got a, it's slightly random, Kylie. Thank you for coming and talking. Um, how have you been keeping your toilets um, frost proof up until now? Um, we are, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we are very lucky that one of our committee members is a plumber and he does a lot of work for us. So we drain the water over the winter because it is not used. Um, and then come spring, it's starting to get used for school camps and things like that. And our plumber very kindly goes and puts all the water back and stuff on for us. Yeah. My curiosity is <laughs> It's a real community yeah. effort. Yeah, that's great. We've been done. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Next on our list is Jill Martin for Puno Dranga Tahi. Ginny's been playing with his background filters, yeah. obviously. I have been. Can you, hear? can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Um, kia ora. Uh, my name's Jimmy Martin. I've been um, very honoured to be put onto the board of Aurora Tamariki. Um, I've had the opportunity of coming to you today, the Vincent Community Board, as a um, yeah, very nervous person coming across. Um, I'm looking, sorry, I'm not looking. The board is looking for a contribution towards our rent of the $6,000 um, for the buildings that we currently rent in the community board. Uh, sorry, not the community board. Sorry, I've got an alarm going off somewhere. I can't bloody stop. Um, so yeah, we, um, we are currently looking for the funding for our rents. Uh, it's a it's a percentage of the rent. We um, we go out and fundraise for the other percentage of it. Um, it's just a portion of it. Um, I find we do a great deal for the young community and the parents um, with what we do. So. Um, like I said, first time at it, so I'd love to have some uh, questions to put me at ease. Jimmy, where does the trust get its majority funding from? Sorry, Martin? Where does the trust get its majority of funding from? As far as I know, the percentage of our funding for rent comes from the Vincent Community Board. Uh, we fundraise the rest of it through different sorts of uh, stuff the kids do, um, as in the coffee cart that you would have seen around the area. Um, yeah, different things like that, I believe. Okay. I think that's a really worthy really, um, cause that you've got there. I was just wondering, can students self-prefer themselves? Pardon me, sorry. The students self preferred themselves to your group. The students self preferred themselves. Yeah, I know. I know that you get referrals from different um, schools. Oh, yes. Prefer. Um, I think they do. I think they do. We're looking at. We're looking at. Um, over lockdown, we were looking at the kids coming. We had interactions with kids over lockdown. We had 132 interactions with kids and we had 112 interactions with parents over the lockdown period. So yes, they do. Um, as you well know, kids are very, um, they're all about touch screens now. Everything's at their fingertips. So we're trying to get um, fully engaged with that side of with the Facebook and all that. We um, Yes, so yes, yes, I believe they do. Thank you. Members, any other questions of Jimmy? Jimmy, thank you. And uh, wasn't too comfortable. Oh no, it was uh, a wee bit, wee bit daunting there, Martin. You uh, you always do a little bit with your uh, your uh, your um, stand stand in the area. Hey, um, yeah, sorry I come across as Jess. I've uh, I haven't had a change, but 
um, not looking to either. Um, it's just someone else's laptop I've had to jump onto, but um, I appreciate it very much, and I know the board appreciates it very much that um, we've got the opportunity of um, approaching you to get partial payment of this, and it's uh, I I'm very proud and very um, yeah, heart driven of how honest people are in this area and willing to give. So thank you. Uh, well done. And last but not least this afternoon, we have from ADMI, the President Diane Duncan. Diane, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm assuming that you can all hear me. Is that correct? OK, great. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity to coming and speaking with um, you today. We have our application in for um, the funding that the board has previously provided us with, plus the funding that we lost from CODC. Um, what we've, um, I suppose what I, the first thing I'd like to point out is just what we've um, been able to achieve in this last year when we had Brian and who was an extremely good manager and very good at fundraising and organising um, a number of events, including, of course, our programme of exhibitions. We've um, since July last year to June this year, we had managed to have 10 exhibitions and five musical concerts. Um, Brian and Mandy were always um, seeking ways to wherever possible we could raise some funds. We would um, they went and got um, uh, liquor licenses to enable us to sell wine at various functions and that was always that was a good um, for us for income as well and of course we um, we have our, our our little art shop so and that raises funds for us we it was a bit sad for us we weren't successful we wanted to perhaps provide the information, seeing as people knew where to find us and we had had information centre in our building. That wasn't to be. The um, decision was made, obviously, to take the information centre to the pharmacy. So we missed that as an opportunity also of being able to, to get funding. But I think probably the thing to take away most, you've, I'm assuming that you have read our application and supporting documents for what, what, what we need. Um, Brian was full time. We have we've looked at how we can cut costs and where we might do that, and we are considering a part time manager. But the um, at present, because we have um, we have a young woman who was helping Brian and Mandy, and she has been able to fill in a wee bit for us. But after this week, um, the days that we will be closed, we will be closed all day Monday, Tuesday afternoon, all day Wednesday. Thursday afternoon um, and then as from the end of the month, Claire, who, who has been working for us, she is going to a full time job as a library assistant in Cromwell, which is their gain and our loss. And that will mean that the museum, um, if nothing happens, if we um, are unable to um, secure funding from you will mean that we will only be able to be open Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, and Sunday from 11 till 2. So it's a sort of serious demise of the museum and gallery as you probably all remember it and know it. Now, um, that of course was precipitated by us losing our funding from CODC and of course with Brian, um, sort of his feeling was, well, his job's not secure and so unfortunately we lost him. But for us to even to be able to get back to what we've been able to achieve in the past, we will need to be continue to be funded and I think we will need security of funding. So um, that rather than you know, perhaps getting funding for this year or, or maybe even next year, if we could, if we know we've got funding for three years, which is what Brian has applied for, um, that would be enormously um, helpful for us. I believe, or we believe, the board believes that we actually provide um, a lot of positive benefits for the community, so much so, I mean, the community at the at the instance, they were the ones who raised the money to build this building. So people do appreciate their only um, public art gallery and the museum. So I think that the community would support us. I mean, they would support you in funding us. Um, and really, we would seriously appreciate money going forward in the future. 
um, I'm, I'm not going over our application. You've got it and um, all the information is there. So if you've got any questions. Questions, members? Diane, I just want, if you could comment, our total budget was $120,000. Sorry, what was that, Mum? Our total budget is $120,000. Our total budget. Our, our, our budget for distribution today is $120,000. Oh, so that was that was all you've got to for today. Correct. Yeah. Well, perhaps, perhaps you the, could. That's for, the, that's for the year, I should say. Yeah. Well, perhaps you could approach CODC and ask for more. Um, perhaps they're underfunding you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, um, that's your five minutes. Thank you. Um, I don't think any other members have got questions. They're not being, we'll actually bring this part of the meeting to a close. Um, just out of interest, Ray Wright, who was going to be here, has circulated his comments from our meeting this morning, so Ray is not going to be ringing in. I will now um, I'm going to carry on with the rest of the meeting. The first item is the confirmation of the minutes of our last meeting. Chairman, I would like to raise something in regard to that. Um, I would like uh, it to be recorded or noted that um, some of the information that we had provided to us in respect of the promotional grants um, turned out to be um, incorrect and um, that we did base uh, the decisions that we made for those promotional grants on that information. So I would like that to be recorded in the minutes. Anybody want to add anything to that comment? Okay, I think we it has been acknowledged that we had some extraneous information to um, and I'm just going to just for my after wide range of discussion, staff advised that the total amount of money available for promotional grants was still up for the current financial. It was agreed that each application would be considered separately. I think we will record in that sentence of the, of the minutes there that there was. Um, Basically, what, what I'm saying is that we received an email um, apology um, yeah. uh, subsequent to the subsequent to the board meeting. Um, I did discuss with Wayne um, that we put in uh, that word discussion, but it doesn't acknowledge, and I think in terms of transparency for um, public record, uh, that we did make decisions uh, based on information which was not correct. Okay, Russell. Rebecca's got some comments to the chair. Um, can I suggest that in the item that we could put, it was noted through the discussion on the minutes that the um, amount, the total amount available for promotional funds was corrected to be, what was it? 41,000. 41, so that would note that it was incorrect at the meeting and that a subsequent correction had been made. And I think we'll discuss this further in the ET today. OK, yeah. yeah, right. Thank you. You happy with that? Yep. Yep. OK, right. With that amendment, can I move that? What? Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> no, no, it's not to you. It's going right through you. Rebecca. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Rebecca and Wayne have made mental notes to, to right. amend that. Yep. I'm going to actually put that to the vote right now. That is a true and correct record. All those in favour? Those against carried. Um, we have no apologies, I'm sorry. I almost yeah, skipped second. that one ahead, eh? Hey? Moved. Moved by me. Seconded. Seconded by Alan. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, 
keep the mind of you by the declaration of interest and because of that item I'm going to hand the chair over to Russell I'm going to excuse myself <coughs> and it's yes, hey? Charlie. Oh, hello. <laughs> Charlie. Yes, that was no, I forgot about the and, and, Char and the dialogue and Charlene's also declaring interest in this item so they're not participating. Right, yeah, I Thank you. Have conflict of interest with the Blossom Festival and also the Pernodangatahi um, application. Okay, okay so Mr. Chair, could I also note that um, that is not, I don't believe it's a conflict of interest. I am a representative on the ADMI board and also KACV, uh, but I am not a voting member, I'm just an observer. And I also will need to do the same for KACB, same deal, observer, not a voting member. So when we get to that item. And also I just need to make a note for um, the climbing wall, no, the boulder in, that my partner has been mentioned in their application through the Dunstan High School um, Association, but I have nothing to do with that also. <laughs> right. Okay, but that the the item under discussion is just going to be the um, mm. report. 21.8.2, the Alexandra Blossom Festival request to retain promotion Thank grant um, on page 18. So um, we have the background there. Um, everybody has uh, read that, uh, I take. Um, and the staff have provided us information and basically two options. One, that uh, this board declines the request, this is the staff recommendation, um, to uh, retain the previously approved and up to a grant of 26,000. And the second option that the board agree um, that it be retained. So no. We've got the those are the two options that have been planted. Oh, sorry, the options are the no, those were the two options that have been um, put in front of us. Um, so would you, uh, over to Ellie, would you like to um, comment Thank on the report? Um, this is my, I do apologise again for the confusion over the figure and just to, um, for clarity for today's discussion, if we look at the 2021-22 year, um, the board has a budget set aside of 41,750. Um, the Previously granted amounts are the $26,000 for the Blossom Festival, which we're about to discuss here, $2,500 to the Arts Trust and $4,000 to Interstellar, which leaves an unallocated balance for the rest of this year of $9,250. So looking at the application that was made by the Blossom Festival, um, the request for funding was for infrastructure which is associated with the cleanup, the waste, um, electrical, fencing, manpower, security, sounds, screens, technical staging. None of those costs have been incurred so therefore um, under that basis and the requirement of the grants policy um, which states that if the project doesn't proceed returned, the recommendation has been made on the basis. Um, only other thing I'd like to just touch on is that in the departure application, the committee made um, was very clear that they were retaining their, which were retaining their surplus, which at that stage was $176,798 to utilise for situations such as this, which would be a expected. Um, And I do acknowledge that for anyone running events at this particular time, it is an extremely challenging environment. And even looking forward months ahead, um, there's no indication that that's going to alter, unfortunately. Members, any questions of Ellie? Was the $26,000 included in that surplus or was it separate to? Uh, no, that was their, that, that surplus was before they received their 26,000. That was their last financial statement at an accumulated surplus of 176,000. Any other questions there? Um, Ellie, did you, did you get the, um, the 
presentation from Blackham Festival at the beginning of the session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any comments on that? Uh, no, other than um, I think to be consistent with the policy, um, I, I believe that the recommendation I presented you with is, is sound. And that the, the committee can come back if they want to run an event later on. Um, the committee is able to come back in the next funding round and apply for funding. Because that funding would go back into that um, cost centre for future use. Members, any other questions? Any discussion? Yeah, no, no. What about um, costs associated with the infrastructure costs, like organising, even though the event didn't go ahead, there was still an organisation of the infrastructure, a lot of work going into that? Um, the co when they made the application, it was pretty clear they said it was for those, the costs, which are on the ground costs at the event not for the organisation of getting those costs. So um, I would still say that, that they have those specific costs that the grant hasn't been utilised. Probably a question for me, I guess. Did you consider um, a partial uh, refund? What, what you've presented is, is either black or white. Mm -hmm. um, did you consider um, that the Blossom Festival had uh, obviously came across costs which they had to make uh, with mm -hmm. no possibility of um, getting an income? Mm -hmm. Did you consider um, that at all? I was what, part of a, the um, assessment of what they were asking for, and uh, if I come back to the fact that the committee had stated in their previous applications they had funding that they were expecting to ensure that they had funds to support a year where they, the event might be cancelled and therefore that this was the best recommendation. Could I just add to that piece as well? Um, Ali's also obviously a client of the event doesn't proceed, the funding must be retained. Yeah. So it's not possible for Ali, Ali to look at and judge on a, a partial return. Um, that's obviously that can be made at this table, but not by some. So are you suggesting that in fact the grant is a contract? No, I'm saying there's a policy that that grant is handed out and, and reflects, and if it doesn't meet the requirements of that policy, then for a start, it's a black and white Return the funding. Obviously, this group can make that decision as to whether or not the funding is. Can we add that through the chair? Every applicant for a grant is made aware, aware of the terms and conditions mm. of the policy, as was this applicant. Mm. And they had um, signed that they had read the terms and conditions. So I guess the question is I'm slightly at a loss here. If, if it is a policy which is sort of almost a contract, then why is it before this board? Perhaps I can um, answer this. We've brought it to the board and actually I think operationally we could have just defined but we understand that the letter was written um, for the board to be able to see and it is an issue that there is a lot of board interest in so we thought it was best to bring it here. <laughs> The first bit I would say um, could have declined, and actually, back to the question of declining, it's a question of asking the money be repaid. Declining the request mm. to not to, to not yeah. repay it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. A double negative. Yeah. But, it, but it, yeah, sorry, it is. Yeah. Uh, I think the level of community <coughs> and board interest yeah. in this event warranted it coming back to your table, noting that um, staff recommendation is consistent with the policy. Yeah. Would anybody like to move either of the options? Roger. Yep. I'll, I'll move uh, option one. Option one being that the um, that the grant uh, be uh, ret uh, retained by the council and not um, passed on to uh, the Rossum Festival. Second for that. 
Anna? Any further discussion on that? Well, I'll put that to the meeting then. Uh, so that um, the motion is that option one be agreed to. Uh, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. I will move on to getting Martin Jackson. Yes. Hi, how I propose to run this next piece is because um, Charlene has um, declared a conflict in the item. I'm going to bring her item to the top for us to discuss and make a decision on that, and then we will discuss the other applications on their merits uh, following that decision. So then, Charlene, any decision you make around um, Charlene's conflict is not affecting the rest. Secondly, um, Roger. Bless your cotton socks, has produced a spreadsheet. Keep <laughs> it up on the screen. Because <laughs> this is quite handy, because if we start robbing Peter and Payne yeah. Paul, you can actually see it in real time while it's up there. <laughs> Just bear with us to the, the, the technical side of it. Um, I'm also going to remind everybody that we have a budget of $125,000 for, $130 for the year. Um, currently, we have applications well in excess of that. I'm not going to tell you that we don't go dipping into reserves, but I'm just going to remind you all the reserves are there for the rainy day or for something which is completely left field and out of the ordinary. One of the questions that you may have is that why where people asked to apply for years two and three, and basically years those who did years two and three have been declined. I'm assuming, looking down at the other end of the table, that's going to reflect what happens in November when this whole policy is reviewed. Okay, so that should answer that question. Now, we're dealing with items which are going to be quite controversial. So I think some of the decisions we're going to make today around these grants are going to have some repercussions. Um, that's why we are here, to make some of those tough calls. So I'm going to open up the, the conversation around the Youth Trust and the funding they have requested from us. The majority of the funding for the Youth Trust comes from Central Lakes Trust. We have traditionally um, traditionally funded um, their rent. So, um, you heard from Jimmy. Does anybody want to, to lead this, start this conversation off? Yes, yes, Jim. I would move yeah. that uh, we approve the um, funding of, uh, to the Youth Trust as requested uh, of $6,000. Any contrary to that? Any thought that we may need to cut out the cloth to suit? Just after yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I guess I just wanted to say, you know, that this is obviously our first time doing this fully contestable round like this, and actually that a hardship grant has already been given out to ADMI, so the amount for today is $101,758, not $120 anymore. Um, half of the applicants are new applicants who have never applied for, which is fantastic, and um, this ward has had the most success in that respect with getting new people in applying for things. Um, so obviously they're, all the applicants are great and so the recommendations take into consideration the policy and the criteria and what's available um, and it's, you know, it's a process that takes a lot of time and I hope that I've provided you with enough information to see that. And 
Um, we did uh, we did advertise the the funding round to people suggesting that they could apply for three years, and since that time, um, as was mentioned, have um, realized that we need to undertake a review of this process, and we will do that in November, so that applicants can come back and apply in the next funding round, which will happen. Um, I think in March next year, we'll have it open so that they can apply um, probably at the May meeting. We don't have a schedule yet, but that's what Ali and I are thinking. Um, and at that stage, people will be able to apply for the remaining funds of this year and for the next financial year. So um, groups might not have that security, but there is always options for them to apply again. And there are some groups who um, might need more. I've suggested they might need more information on their projects. So same with them. They can go away and gather that information. They can come back. There's no reason that they can't come back again and try again. Any questions to start <coughs> about the report? Uh, yes, in regard to ADMI, uh, you considered the, the museum function, uh, but not the art gallery function. It, it is the only public art gallery in Central Otago, and people from uh, Queenstown uh, think it very highly of it because it's far better than anything they've got. So in fact, there are two components there. There's the, the museum itself, the traditional museum. There's also the art gallery. So if we, following your argument, if we apply $40,000 to each, uh, the total package is $80,000 to ADMI, not $40,000. Well, I, you, you can think of it that way if you want. I mean, it's all in one building, so to me, it, it is all in, in one space, um, delivering a function. And I guess just to clarify on that as well, that ADMI did have the possibility to apply to the council for funds. Nothing, no one ever told them that they couldn't, um, but they, they chose not to. You know, that we didn't receive any application. But do you think that they would have applied when that they were told that their funding was withdrawn? It wasn't their funding, it was that amount of funding that they have historically received, but there was still funding available and everyone is open to apply. So, we, sorry, I'm a little bit confused. Are, are we doing. Can we get the answer? Yes, thank you. Yeah. I'll just say we'll receive the report. I think we'll. We, so that Charlie's yes. can participate in conversations yep. and debates around the other funding that. We'll, um, we'll receive the report and we'll, we'll deal with the, we'll bring off the item of the youth trust to the fore and decide on that and then we can carry on. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I do apologise to staff for, for jumping the gun and not allowing them to present the report. But um, I think we're pretty content with where we are as far as the recommendations, and we have a recommendation there from the Alexander District Youth Trust, which Russell has moved and Lindley has seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Right. Let's continue seeing the museum was top of mind at present. We'll, we'll, we'll can I'm bring sorry. Charlene in? And Charlene can come come and join us now, and I will. I think to, I'm going to go around the table and just get let every individual here member have a have their say on it. Um. So Roger, I'll, I'll let you lead off because you've already made the comment about the forty thousand to the museum and and the state of the art gallery. Is there anything more you want to add to that? So the, the two functions. Um, the other thing was there's a comment uh, in the report um, that the uh, would never become self. There's no evidence that it would become self-sustaining. I point out that there's, to my knowledge, no um, museum in New Zealand that is self-sustaining. Uh, Te Papa is, is funded by New Zealand government. Um, the Dunedin Museum is, in fact, funded by, and I took a note of this, um, Dunedin City Council, the Clutha District Council, the CODC, and the Waitaki District Council. So they all depend upon um, either the government or local bodies or some appropriate 
So, so, so it just seems to be an, a, a, a relevant con component of yeah. the report. Yes, yeah, because we that's part of how we assess the grants is whether mm. or not they have the potential to become self-sustaining. Um, so when we looked at the council applicants, many of them don't have that don't have that um, don't show indication that they will, and that's our trust heritage trust. Um, in big groups like that who are relying on salary costs. So it's the same thing with the museum. It's nothing more for the museum in particular. It's just that the money, the kind of money they're applying for shows a reliance on the community board. And, and that is one thing in our matrix that we look at. And if I may, when we review the grant policy and I think that we can look at those through points. Is it, is it necessary to have the Criteria. At the moment, it is, so we can't. Yeah, and, and I think if, if there's going to be a message coming from this table back to you guys when you do that review, is some of these things don't sit in that contestable grants policy, and, and museums could be put into the same classification as swimming pools and libraries. It's mm -hmm. a necessary thing that we as a community fund. Because they are like, you know, it's it's part of our community. So, um, Anna. Taking the words right out of my mouth. I, yeah, that's all I want to say is that supporting our heritage and those values of having a museum and an art gallery in that public space for us to all to share and celebrate and enjoy and invite tourists into is really critical. And so anything that we can do as a board to support that, I, I'm sure you can all appreciate that this is not a subjective process for me, and no. I'll have my own opinions too. Yeah. I'll have, to have a formula to follow. Um, yeah. okay, so <laughs> and thank you for pro providing the report. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we do sympathise with you because you know you might you have a very small cake to slice up. <laughs> it's not fun. And, and we've got a tougher decision because we're going to upset somebody at the end of the day. You know, so Charlene, your thoughts, please. Oh, yeah, um, I disagree with the last comment, Martin, and I think that, yeah, it's the bigger picture stuff around where this actually sits. Lovely. I'm agreeing with that, Taylor, on that last thing to go to the board of trade, and probably going to cut them off at the knees and the supportive measures that they've got from the leadership trust and the type of museum indicate they're doing a really good job. Mm. So I'm thinking that. Um, the contestable funding round isn't the right place for this funding, and hopefully that can be looked at at the November review. Mm. We can find enough today. I'm sorry, is there anywhere else? <laughs> no, that's the thing, there isn't anywhere else. <laughs> in the meantime. Yeah. Just to repeat, I'm um, sorry, um, for the chair, that we've all used this um, through the museum investment work that's about to begin. Uh, so that's starting this week um, in terms of um, the whole plan of how we fund um, museums. So, so that it will be, while aligned with the grants policy, the place of the conversation with communities and trust over this, we will be looking at that as part of that when we start. Thank you. Ian? Yeah. Um, we've already granted. ADMY 18,000 through the hardship grant and plus 40,000 is 58, which is more than, as it said in the report, it's more than another organisations providing similar services. Um, yeah, I look forward to a review of this. Um, I, I reflect your comments, Martin and Anna's. Um, there are some things that um, organisations such as a council or its boards are obliged and should be proud to support. Um, things like swimming pools, which I think are a hole that we fill with money on a, on a continuing basis. <laughs> yeah. But um, all of those sorts of things. But if we only pay lip service to the well-beings of this community through um, an inappropriate level of funding to our heritage, which on one hand we are promoting and saying that we value, and on the other hand um, I believe that we are not particularly. Um, I was alarmed, I've got to say, 
to hear um, what um, Diane Duncan said in terms of the um, opening hours. But I'm also aware um, from my position of being uh, this board's representative on things like the Clyde Community Group, um, that uh, these museums rely extraordinarily heavily on community volunteers to run um, these organisations, which we are supposed to be valuing. Uh, I don't think the comparisons in the report were things like, you know, the Heritage Trust or the Arts Trust. Yes, we provide this level of funding to those bodies, but pairing um, what those functions do or what that money goes to, it goes towards the part-time payment of a single person to do a single job. On this, um, we're not doing that. It, we're not really comparing apples with apples here. So um, I think with that, I'll um, retain my comments until we discuss the, the level of funding. Thanks, Martin. Right. Excuse me, Martin, can I just yes, comment on yes, yeah. um, Ian's comment? Um, the $80,000 there is a small increase on what we've traditionally given, which is $75,000. That's so it, it's just the existing traditional grant plus a small pocket. You, when you say $80,000, you need to take the $18,000 you gave to Hutch. That's correct. That's, that's correct. That's, that's correct. 61000 that's shown on the yeah. thing. So what we'd be giving them this right time round would be the sixty-one thousand. This bearing in mind that we only have one hundred and one thousand in the budget. I've done some other adjustments. Basically, your 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 suggestions there are we're going to be spending ninety-six thousand three hundred ninety-eight of our hundred one thousand. Correct. Correct. Well, can you move it up here so slightly? Yes. Um, and that leaves a balance of five, um, whatever it is, yeah. five thousand three sixty. So there's a five thousand seven hundred sixty dollar kitty at the end. Okay. The chair, can I please make a comment? Just a reminder that there will be one more funding round, and we do for sure know that we have one group who has traditionally received funding from this board who did not apply, um, which is the Alexandra Pike Band. So they may well come next time. So just bear I'm well, I'm, believe me, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> it's been a closest worship after this morning's cup of coffee. That's that's been a fairly traditionally a fairly small amount compared to some of these. Yes, I think. Yeah, but yeah, it's just yeah, to keep yeah. in mind that other groups might come, and you you may want to have some money available for the next time. Well, is it easy to perhaps and consider the ones that sh that um, Roger's suggesting shouldn't get any money? Well, we're going to have to not give some people some money. Yep, yep. That's generally the bottom line. So, and Boulder Inn has been suggested that they get no money in terms of this um, yep. by both staff and, and Roger's spreadsheet. I'd hate to think Roger's pretty yeah. chilling. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's merely a talking, I think it's a it's great thing. Oh, right. Through the chair, it's rather unusual to have an elected member's spreadsheet with suggestions that are presented as part of the report. And I wondered whether or not it would be more appropriate for Roger to present his thinking and then to delete that column so you just leave with a calculator for you guys to work out collectively. Yeah. Yes, that might be the answer. Mm -hmm. I think I think we'll take what Roger has put up there as read and thank him for his endeavours and yeah. and then we'll give us a total as well. Correct. Yep. But the next one, Jay, you could be using that here. We'll do that. If you've got your 18 that we've already used. Uh, that's fine. That Obviously, that, that is. Yeah. And we'll get a, get a total at the bottom. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, working down in that order, the boulder in, as um, Russell's looked at, staff recommendation was no. Um, and I just, it, yes. Sorry, not quite. I did suggest um, that a rent review process oh, yes. would be a contribution because right now they take commercial 
Oh, yeah, that that would that. charitable trust, wasn't it? Yeah, because, I think yeah. that's a, a, yeah. a, a, a good result because if you're going in there and actually offering it to, uh, at a rented community based living as opposed to commercial living, you have your significant savings. Can you expand on what that saving would be? Well, it's hard to say without going through the leasing and license policy, but it could go from a couple of thousand to a few hundred or something like yeah. that. Yeah, right. It would be reasonably significant. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Okay. Um, I can make comment on Boulder and if you like as well. I did have a chat with Brad to ask yes. what, was, what the state of play was. Yeah. Um, so he said that since putting that application in, he has um, gone ahead and got, I believe, in the itemised expenses he was trying to cover, there was, um, there was holds for more climbs or more routes. Um, and there was the CCTV and then there was uniforms and merchandise I believe he's since gone ahead and got his uniforms and merchandise sorted which he himself himself yeah which he'd, yep. go, he'd go out and sell and, and yeah yeah that's right and yeah and as is in the report we are developing a CCTV policy for our venues so uh -huh. that's probably not uh, yeah. Cool. Mm. yeah and the other thing that you know because safety was raised as an issue and yeah I mean yeah that sounds a bit not great <laughs> The suggestion. Anyway, I asked him about that because he said there's an induction process and he said, yep, so the induction process means that essentially anyone who is inducted um, is almost at, depending, and he assesses their ability on an individual level, but will give that person almost that ability to be able to run the boulder in themselves if they're at that level. So if they're at that level of being able to run boulder in after their induction, they're deemed to be safe to um, enter it. After hours, because it'd be a relationship. And lastly, uh, what I was going to say also, I said, is there a first aid kit? And do you know where your closest AED is? Yes. And he said, yes and yes. Fine. Yeah. Just the process of clarity. You yeah. may not. I may ask you not to vote. To uh, sure. Them. Yeah. No. Happy to do that. I just wanted to seek some more information around yeah. how we, yeah. how, sure. what that information was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, having got to Boulder in. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> he's done a great job. Yeah. And yeah. mainly, thank you. Thank you for the yeah. long spent on the yeah. spent. Yeah. So I all credit yeah. to Brad um, for what he's done. Um, it's, a, it's just a shame we're working on such a limited budget, yes. but I think the assistance of the week will give him in kind the other to vote. And, 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 and because, you know, after all, even though it is a, the model is a charitable trust. It, it, the other model is also a commercial entity too, because if you look at the other um, climate, you know, things like this, it, mm. our neighbours in Wanaka, for instance, they've done as a complete commercial entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, the next on our list. Oh, hang on, we're going to decide about that. Oh, yes. We haven't decided about any of those. I think we're going to do them individually. I did yeah. say that yeah. right. So, recommendation is zero dollars. Can I have somebody who wishes to remove that? Russell, Senator, Lindley, all those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Next up on the list is the Institute Community Society for Operational Costs. Which one? Please read the review of fire. Right, anybody want to open up? They asked for fifteen hundred, and it's been recommended fifteen hundred. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a well, it's a well used pool. I think it's an important venue, uh, and it's one that, without the appropriate maintenance, would quite uh, seriously de deteriorate. It's, it's not ours, is it? We gave we gave that. Oh, that's one of the ones we gave away a number of years ago. Yeah, we have we have this this board has given them assistance. I certainly recommend uh, re recall in yes. the past, yeah. and and but I think they provide um, uh, the facilities not only for the Galloway community, but I think as as um, Tim got from the questioning, it's open up to the. Uh, this is the Ainsley or not Galloway. Oh, sorry, I thought we were yeah. talking about the same. Yeah. Same yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 The same. The, the same does apply. 
I know they have the same recommendations not to run 21sts and teenage parties there yeah. as well. So they are trying to preserve, because preserve the, it as much the as they Eastwood can. The Community Hall has been bitten with teenage yes, parties. Yes, it still has. <laughs> in recent memory. Yeah. Okay, so look, we have uh, $1,500. Somebody I'm happy to move that. that. Yep. And second, Roger Russell and Roger. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Um, Council irrigation. <sighs> Can I start on this one? Um, I mean, this is a very good idea. Mm. Uh, one would hope it would be part of their business model as being good operators of of that resource and and the, the irrigation is a commercial enterprise um, and my immediate reaction reading the report was why would why should we be subsidizing it when it's it would be good business practice on their part to do this I will make anybody else like the comment. I have a question, if I may, for Paula and Nikki. Yes. Um, just on the matrix, I just noted that um, under the community driven and enhancement for community wellbeing, um, it was suggested that they only covered some. I just wanted to get further comment on that, why it was only some. If you can remember. <laughs> Um, no, I actually, I, I don't actually, because it is a public chat mm, mm. accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I would, um, yeah, that is perhaps the hair. Okay. I think ultimately that it is um, a great initiative. And mm. Everyone, anyone can go there. So mm -hmm. there isn't really any restrictions. I have two further points to make on that as well. That uh, you suggested the eco fund, and sorry, this is kind of more logistics. Eco fund and the dot community fund. Mm of suggesting that dot community fund is gone okay. and the well, eco fund is under review and they don't know when it might become available again. So okay. just sort of bear that in mind as well. Anybody else got any comments? Oh look, should we give them an indication that we support the work of the private organization? We can do that without giving them any money. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so, hang on. Okay. Sorry, just a comment. I realise why I put some mm -hmm. because it's not just enhanced well-being, but community-driven, and actually, it's not really community-driven. It's being it's being driven by a company who in this yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I think at least it's for them. Okay, just by just one more Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. going. To, I'm going to move we decline the request and don't fund them. Right, but we do write them saying that we endorse what they're trying to do. Yeah. Do I have a seconder? Yeah, absolutely. Those in favour? Against? We're being carried. Galloway Hall operational costs. They've asked for 10. Staff have requested, offered them five. Five, yeah. Um, I'm of a mind to still give them money, but give them less than the five. I can't. got halls off our books so they wouldn't cost us anything and put the cost back onto the people who are using them. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some ongoing things which you mentioned. I mean, obviously, I had sympathy with the fact that, you know, they're paying more in line charges now than they are for yeah. energy. What a surprise that is. Um, but uh, they've been faced with a, a bit of a, a strange one with the roof. Um, suddenly leaking, which is made when I think she said that they was that three thousand dollars they're suddenly having to pay for scaffolding. Two thousand, yeah. Two thousand, yeah. Um, let alone the roof. Um, I, I do think that they've been a, a very, very good um, community resource uh, in the past. So I think giving them half the the um, half the requested funding would be appropriate. So the five grand. Would be um, would still fit. Mm. 
And I'd suggest also because it is a historic building um, and well used by the community. And as Tim asked, is it used by people other than Galloway community? And it is, I think, helping support that is good for them as well. She can, she's, she's walking back now. We've just started that. Okay. Well, does somebody want to? So we're currently we're looking at still giving them the five. Hmm? Yeah. Do you want to move that? I'll move. Roger. Right. Seconder. Yep. Anna. Those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Hi, Hata. Hi, Hata. Hi, Hata. Hi, Hata. Hi, Hunter. I can't get it out today. No, I I've had problems till <laughs> today. It's just <laughs> my tongue's not wanting to work in that fashion. Mm. Um, I think we all acknowledge the fantastic work these good people do. Um, the tradition for funding from us in the past has been none. Again, they're asking staff are recommending to give them hundred percent of what they've asked for. Um, I'm in a mind to offer them sort of $3,000 and we come back at the end of this process and see where the wash up is, but I think we're going to have to, we do have to make some cuts. And I'll put that out on the table for comment. I'm surprised at 100% funding, um, and I agree that we need to look after the community for our future, but I'm surprised that it's not being funded for our future, but we've also got to look after our past, so it's a balanced view. Any other comments, Spots? Yeah. Um, the High Hayata Trust, um, the, the Right Head Nursery, um, feeds its, um, what it produces, plants, into all sorts of community projects, mm -hmm. like we looked at this morning, morning correct? and others that are mentioned here, uh, and others that are occurring on the community, Miners Lane and the other side of the uh, Tweets of River and so on and so forth. So, um, I think we, I think they deserve Support. Um, my only question, um, and I should have clarified this before coming here, was who's actually going to own the these components that are, are being built there, the new, the new shade house, etc. Because the original arrangement was that it was all owned by DOP, and that the trust was using it uh, under a mem memorandum of understanding. I don't know whether that's has changed at all. Well, can I can I suggest that. If we leave the, the offer at 3K, but we we need some clarification on the ownership of the of either being built, mm -hmm. well, that that gives them the support they need, gives them the, the opportunity to go to other funders for funding, for supporting them to that level. And there's also another chance in that. Possibly. Okay. Yes. There may not be any money left by the time we're finished. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, the suggestion to give them 100% was based on the fact that they score very highly on the assessment matrix. Yeah. Um, they have a very good project plan in place and it's a one-off cost that will have them set up and allow them to, in the future, rely less and less on grants. You can see that in their financial statements. Yeah. There's three applications in here that all use plants that come from this nursery and there was no reason to believe that the the trust wouldn't own those assets. They might be on dock land, but they didn't give any indication that the assets wouldn't belong to them. And just further to that as well, they rely obviously on grants and there is a lot of time spent applying for grants and trying to seek funding, seek funding, seek money. <laughs> Um, so I would suggest maybe more than three thousand dollars for these guys, just because they that they have such a they have such a solid volunteer base. They have done. They are one of the few organisations I see that have done really well to get volunteers to stay and be passionate about what they do. They have two part time staff. They're doing a lot for our community. They're working with schools. They're really building. They're really building our heritage and our future as we speak. Any support we can give. Any other comments, Charlie? Yeah, I think this group is uh, absolutely a valued member of our community. Um, I just agree with all the comments that have been made so far. Okay. Yeah. I would like to give them the full amount. 
Yeah, I I tend to think so because I think in the big scheme of things, the difference between three thousand and five thousand in a few bucks is probably um, you know bugger all. But I I was impressed at this morning's um, presentation from Ray um, when we were talking about the um, the strip uh, along um, the street um, by uh, Valence Cottage and their go-to place for getting all of the cuttings and the seedlings and goodness knows what else was high high arta. Um, I, I think I would tend to go with the full amount and okay. have that accept the staff recommendation. Yeah. All right. Can I then move that um, we uh, approve the $5,450? Yes, seconder. Ian, those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carry. I'm a real fan of public art. Yes. Well, we haven't got $28,500. No. And I just. Kermit Dunstan must be sitting on a small fortune in the profits from various wine festivals. I wish I'd spend some money. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I asked the question yes, I know. Um, as I did. Um, I, um, I think the idea is absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be a little bit of. Were you. Did you have your thoughts clarified by um, by Marnie's questions or answers around the questions about um, where it was going to be located and the ownership of the land and yeah they the, didn't the, have that information when they applied so that no so that you're happier now with that yeah yeah I, I do think um, uh, there hasn't really been any engagement or consultation done on the project. I, I still would agree with my comments that further information would would be useful. Maybe this is something that we decline today, but potentially could revisit if we have further information and that they could seek some further support from other parties. Yeah, I, I think and we that could be communicated to them that we love the idea, but we don't have the dollar for it. There's no any final support that we can get back Well, no, there's, no, there's none really because it's on private, it's on it's private public, land. And Crown land, land, it's not. I can well, it's contact energy land. Oh, contact energy. Yeah. yeah. Already had verbal approval. The original site, the first part was going to cause kind of for the habit of the state highway. Because yeah. it is quite large what they're proposing. Five metres across, I think, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five metres span. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not and quite that angel of the more. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. 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 Uh, Sounds yeah. OK. Mm. It's Fine. So we'll just, we'll, we'll uh, accept the, the staff recommendation, but inform the group of our thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll move that. And let me second it. All those in favour? <laughs> now, the only thing that just occurred to me, and we're, we're, by moving and seconding these items as we go, we're, going, we're digging ourselves a huge hole because we're not going to be able to go back and make any changes. But I'll see you. The CEO is going to. I know. So we need a running, because guys, we're. Have we got a running total there? Yep. Yeah. Where's the running table? Need to cut the other bit. Um, through that, I think not only do, of course, get another round this financial year as well. So um, the budget is not a target. So, <laughs> but then I was just thinking, if we if we spend it now, it's going to save the staff a whole lot of time. About you know, then we're going to have to repeat it. But we're still going to receive some inquiries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The pipe band, isn't it? Or the grass band, whatever it is. So here we go. So. I'm sitting over that one. Right. Keep our looks out to Clive Beautiful. Beautification projects. That's the shaky bridge. No, no. That's no. 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 Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah. And we're tightening up the memorandum of understanding with Keep Alexander Clive Beautiful as part that's of what this. The parts team would like to do, yeah. Yes. Because as we discussed earlier on today, um, and supporting community organisations, sometimes we inadvertently create nooses for our necks as far as ongoing costs are concerned.
Yeah, we can volunteer, can't we? Well, they do a great job. We're going to have to address the elephant in the room going back up to the museum and put some dollar figures in there so we've got a reasonably good idea what our bottom line looks before we get any further. Well, the big ones really are ADMI and cricket, isn't it? Those are the big, the big amounts of money. Um, well, let's let's deal with the elephant in the room. Let's deal with ADMI. I move that um, ADMI be offered uh, $80,000, of which uh, the 18242 um, has already been paid. I'm second here. Discussion, folks. Charlene, you've got any comments? I think that we, as we've talked about before, um, this really needs to be looked at in another area. So it's really hard to find where it sits. Agreed. But even if it's set in another area, you've got to also understand is that we are waiting for this. The, the cost to the ratepayer won't change. If we move mm. this particular figure to another line somewhere, it still mm. has to be rated for. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's a separate item, no. No, that's why I'm here. Well, we can't make that change now. We have to make it in the two grand and the next time we're trying to. All right, we've got to move in the second bit. No one is speaking against motion. I will put it. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Carried. Just, just thinking about that two for you, two and three. Then. Might be a result resolution from the November. Exactly. Right. We now have a balance of just under eighty thousand. That's that which is spent. That's the amount of spent. Balance is left. Just, just. Go down one, go down one. There we go. Right. You just keep it down here if you can. Um, you can okay, you, well, 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 we'll go to the other elephant in the room, which is the cricket. I'll be straight, guys. My initial reaction when I saw this was after what has been happening with cricket and Mongi Stadium, I thought they had. The chicken. Yeah. No. Um, I agree with that comment, um, Martin, and I think that there's an opportunity for Otago Cricket to maybe talk with some of those other users and for them to look at ways to be able to fund and support this. Um, mm -hmm. my, I would go with the decline option on this one. Do you want to put that, Charlene? Charlene supports declining the 10,000. I'm happy to move that. Does somebody want that? Russell, all in favour? Aye. Any against? Aye. Ian, I'd ask you, you know, the opportunity to, I'll give the opportunity to talk against that. I think against. you are. You're voting against, against it. declining it. Yeah. Against declining it. Uh, well, I think it's not just for cricket, it's for um, winter sports as well. Um, and, and so I think it's important that we that we support our, our sporting community. Okay, noted. Yeah. 
Can I just make a comment to that, please, if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind? I, I think in terms of um, supporting our community, sporting community, um, we've spent in the last three years something like 300, over $300,000 on professional cricket uh, and their resources um, in our community. And I believe, and I believe very strongly that our um, our main support should be in our community, and that means grassroots. Um, so I think I think professional sport in here, and we listened to we listened to the guy today that presented, and he saw that um, scoreboard as a means of income for professional cricket. Um, it wasn't going to be something that was going to be donated. It was going to be available, possibly. Um, anyway, okay, that's it. Thank you, thank you, Russell. Okay, was it income to cover the costs, though, rather than? Okay. No, I'll sell advertising on it. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be there to make a profit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, look, it's been the motion's been put. It's been passed, mm -hmm. and it's just the reason I said. You know, the reason I say that is it, 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 I'd, I'd really like the opportunity to express your views before you actually vote against it. You, know? <laughs> you might be able to persuade one or two of us to actually come along with it. You know? right. so, I'm Jason. Thank you. Um, next up on our list is okay, we've, we've got the two, we've got Keep Alexander Beautiful and their two projects, the Shaky Bridge and their general. <laughs> So I mean, it's the same organisation, guys. Two different projects, big chunk of change. Mm. I would like to see us we treat that as as one pot, mm. even mm. though it is. I know it is two separate projects, but um, considering the issues that we face, of having not enough money to go around, and thoughts, feelings. Are you talking about both the Salvation Army and Shaky Reserve? No, 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 no. Shaky and KACB. Oh, okay. we, will, we will vote on them as separate items, yeah. but we need to have a discussion on sort of it is what the, the figures look like. All right. I mean, it's acknowledged that Keep Alexander Clyde Beautiful do a phenomenal amount of work on oh, right. us. Yeah. We have got $22,000 left to play with. Um, which includes next March as well. Yeah, which includes next March as well. Yeah. Any thoughts on five thousand for keeping it under five And this for the shift. Um, my feeling is that that's. Just under 10k there. That give give the the the, the beautiful general beautification projects 1500 and the balance of 25 to the bridge and invite them to come back in, in March. Well, we won't have much left over March, but they could try again in March, or they could try in 2022. <laughs> Um, yeah. Just to um, point out that the reason I've recommended the full amount is because, again, it was a really good application, really thorough, and rated really highly on the assessment criteria. There was a really good project plan, mm. um, and it's uh, anticipated it's a one off cost. They'll do that project, and then that project is done, and it has benefit for everyone it, and for council as well. It's an asset. They're asking for contributions to get a water connection in, which will come back to council as an asset. So giving them partial funding could result in some issues. They'll have to find funding from other areas. So we just need to be conscious of um, how exactly we're contributing in that way. Every organisation on that list has had to go to other areas to find some funding, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes, of course, I, but <clears throat> I'm just talking about based on the criteria yeah. Yeah. and the assessment that I've made. We, which one were you? For the shaky bridge. For the shaky bridge, right? Yeah, yeah. To get a water connection going so that the planting is successful, and yeah. in three years' time, that that water connection will become a council asset. Yeah, anyway. yeah. How, how do you? How did you 
compare um, the shaky bridge one with the Keep Alexandra Fly Beautiful? How would you assess those in terms of balance? Um, I assessed Shaky Bridge much higher because there was a lot more detail. The Keep Alexander yeah. Beautiful didn't have a lot of project detail with it. Um, it was a bit vague um, and just a list really of the projects and 5,000 of it was for a seat and there was no information about that. Right, okay. So, mm, yeah. so on that basis, Mark, the, what you were saying, would it be would it be appropriate to give the shaky bridge one the full amount and then the partial one for for I mean it is, it is only still partial for Clive Beautiful uh, Alexander Clive Beautiful um, maybe give them two and a half in the full amount for shaky bridge something like that I think so. I'll, I'll move that we give uh, the full amount for the shaky bridge project. Yes, I'm happy to do that. Was this the Shaky Bridge route? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would sorry, I know that this is probably a bit late. I would suggest just a slightly lesser amount for Shaky Bridge and just a little bit more for KACB. Sorry, around two and a half, I was thinking for KCB. Just to keep them going because they do provide like you said, they provide a lot of value to our amenities and spaces around here. That's what I suggested two and a half. For, oh, you suggested two and a half. Sorry. Yeah. I'm so busy okay. looking at the numbers. Yeah. No, I suggested two and a half for Sorry. the uh, okay. Keep Alexandra Clyde Beautiful. Yes. Uh, and the full amount for Shaky Bridge. Yeah. Now, if we did that, that's two and a half, and say ten, that's twelve and a half. That still leaves, um, say, around about ten thousand mm -hmm. nine and a half in the balance. Mm -hmm. I've made the comment that um, KACB's balance sheet is very, very healthy. True. It is. Yes. So is it choice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is it okay? Back to you. <laughs> so we've, we've, got a, we've got a we've got we've got proposed and seconded for shaky bridge, haven't we? Yeah. So yeah. two and a half. Okay. 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 No, no, no. We're just oh, looking. Okay. Yeah. We'll just we'll just do this. We'll, we'll do the shaky bridge one. Yeah. Yes. We've got a move and second to this. I'm going to put it. It's a nine three nine three. The full amount. Mm -hmm. Those in favour. I, I against Karen. No, it's Kate, Keep Alexander Club, you've got a very healthy balance sheet. Mm. Um, that's subject to that memorandum of understanding. There's projects that um, are potentially mm. going to cost the ratepayers that they are. I wonder if in this year that we actually give them a considerably less than the 8475. The staff suggestion was 3475. Mm. And I heard a figure of 25 out there somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Somebody prepared to put 25 into that sprint space. Yep. Russell, seconder, Anna. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? And if anybody talks against the Salvation Army, getting $297. <laughs> 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 right? yeah. There's something we need to pay for. Uh, okay. <laughs> I would like to move to give the Salvation Army $297 towards the resource consent for their. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. Well, I think a second is limiting. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. We missed anybody out. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Over, oh, over and okay. Okay. Operational uh, yes. over there. Over well. Over there. Um, <coughs> they get three thousand plus out of us already for the pool. Because this is towards the pool, isn't it? Yes. It's a council. Um, yeah. Pool. Yeah. Look, uh, operators. I'm. I'm mind to. It's, Support staff recommendation. I'll put that if somebody likes to second it. I'll second it. Roger, those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Who else? Yes. I can. Oh, I can. <coughs> um, yes. But you can't argue with the benefits they bring to this community. Mm -hmm. um, they've probably even stepped up even further since the information centre has shifted because they are sort of <coughs> dealing with a lot of that social 
social sort of stuff. Um, they've asked for, and you know, we again, this is one of the problems with, with our, our grants process that groups like this do come to rely on the ratepayers in this community for, for their ongoing support. So I'm of a mind to support them to the tune of 2000. Well, I think it's a, it's a valuable service to some vulnerable members of our community that may not be able to access those types of services otherwise. So mm -hmm. I think they should get the four thousand that they've been had that they've had previously. If it was four thousand, they could leave um what on the balance? Nine account five thousand uh, one hundred and sixty. No, go down to the balance. Oh, it would go down to <clears throat> five, five eight sixteen. Five eight sixteen. And yeah. and um, as Nikki was saying, the the only thing that we know about is the band at the moment, which is how much? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred at the moment. Mm. We don't know what else is going to pop out of it. Oh, look, and there's bound to be other things popping out. But you know, if, if when Nikki and Paul put the weird out about this, they're going to. Obviously, say there's that five thousand minus the newspaper read leak left and they have to put around it. There's going to be you know four and a half, only five k left to play with. Mm. Yeah, I think they'd be actively discouraging people from walking in there and putting presentations in for ten thousand dollars or any more. But is it fair to say that this is basically the main guts of the? Of the it's really hard to know because we've never done this process no, before, okay. you so, know, and a lot of groups have come. Some of them are probably for annual costs, um, quite a few of them will be for annual costs, but some of them are for one-off costs for different project ideas. And, 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 and what yeah. the process is defeating is one of the, the big picture objectives of the contestable fund was to try and seed things which were new and different. Mm. And <clears throat> If that's a failing in the process, that's a failing in the process because we've still had these groups out here who come to us annually for they have an, a, a, an expectation. Mm. And uh, that's the challenge. And that's the challenge we will face when we come to review this policy in mm. November. But it's a pretty good mix, isn't it, of, of things that's involving, you know, environment, um, community involvement. Yeah, it is. It's a very good mix and, and service delivery. I'm going to do a counter proposal to you. I'm going to say we'll split the difference between the, well, between the five and the four. two and four, and, the, and we'll make it th um, 3.5. Seems a great amount of vulnerable people in our community, and I think I agree with anyone this way. On the floor. Yeah. I'd like Kuna Rangatahi, but on the other end of the spectrum, in a way, isn't it? Same thing that you. Well, sorry, and I don't, I'm not meaning anything other than. You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, have I spent a wee bit of time in that office, and you're quite right. Um, <laughs> also, a good compromise. Pause a good compromise. I'll, I'll move. We give them four thousand dollars. Do I have a second? Yes. Yeah. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against. Carried. No, okay. I've got to go. Yeah. <sighs> I'll move to receive the report and accept the level of significance. Do I have a second? Oh, Roger, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Brief to withhold any grant funding in the digital deposit. And B, and considers the following applications which we've considered, which is 1 through to 14. Hmm? Oh, oh, sorry, 1 through to, yeah, it's 14. And but as, as discussed, I don't know the words I'm looking for here. Grant, the figures. You can put the words in my mouth as far as that one. Somebody can. Do I need to move that as in one whole? Yeah. Oh, no, just be. Just be. Yeah, so I'll, I'll move B. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Yes, carry. Thank you. Second. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Russell. Um. Pure. 
Sorry, so I just just seek a bit of clarification from the community board just on C two, and the reason I'm bringing it up is that the um, the the recommendation, the resolution is that the uh, first receives the money to cover operational costs. I picked up a discussion to do with the split between the art gallery and museum. I'm just wondering, in that resolution, if you'd like to have that to cover operational costs of the museum and, and the art gallery. gallery yeah, please. Yeah. I think it's a one legal entity, isn't it? It's 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 called yeah. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Well done, guys, and we'll have this discussion no doubt later in the year in November, which is not that far away. We'll come next month. <laughs> We'll review it yeah. so you're, you're doing a channel review. When you've taken some points that we've made here, you'll be coming back to council or community boards. We'll have to do both. You'll have to do both. So that won't be until the new year. New year. Okay. Before, before the next round. Is before the March. Before yeah. the March round. Yes. <laughs> Look, I hopefully we'll, we can make it a lot easier for all of us. And guys, I think we did quite well there. That was um, yes. Office. You got it done on time. You're still on time. <laughs> <laughs> you buy now, a clock watcher. Um, <laughs> cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Next item on the agenda. Oh, look, this is complicated too. Wonder. It's not. It's a language <laughs> classification for the Northern Reservoir. What's this page? Page 29. No, no, it's not. 284. 284. It's actually not something. I can always remember doing a book report on War and Peace on a registered version of it and being written by a seriously wrong language teacher because you knew exactly what I've been reading. <laughs> London, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. I don't think it's complicated. Oh, I was just being sad. <laughs> Um, the Alexandra Northern Reservoir is located above the Alexandra Cemetery. Um, it sits on Lot 1 DP 27045. Um, that is a parcel of land that is contained um, within part of um, a greater parcel of land that is recreation reserve. The current Northern Reservoir tank was constructed in 1989. It has a capacity of 2,200 Liters, uh, cubic liters, cubic, sorry, cubic uh, meters. Yeah, cubic meters. I'll slow down. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> cubic. Right, we know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> to meet increasing demand and demand for the height of the season, the infrastructure team proposed to build a new reservoir on the site. They will build it on the site immediately to the left of the existing um, reservoir. It will have a capacity of 4,400 cubic metres. Um, that tank will look like the tank that is shown in figure three on page 285. Um, for the most efficient connection to, or well, the most efficient way of connecting that to the existing infrastructure, so plumbing into all of the, um, the utility network um, pipes that are associated with that um, existing structure is to have it sit um, slightly forward of the existing boundary. And to do that, because it is recreation reserve, we would need to reclassify that land. Um, it's a very narrow strip of land that would need to be reclassified. It would be approximately 70 metres long and approximately 3 metres wide, give or take. But that will allow that tank to be um, constructed just forward and connecting to that infrastructure. So the proposal is to um, well, today we need to ask you to agree to the proposal to reclassify that approximately 250 metres to allow that tank to be um, constructed just forward, um, and to agree to the um, when it was reclassified to be reclassified as uh, local purpose water reservoir and to extend that existing designation under the district plan subject to the um, resource consent uh, resource management act. So can you Does have anybody have any questions? There are not being any. Well, would somebody like to move A, B and C, please? Ian, second or Lindley, all those in favour? I suppose. Yes, carried. Perfect. Thank you very much. 
Why is the meeting schedule for 2022? Page 292. Uh, Rebecca's here. Oh, uh, okay. Rebecca? <laughs> Um, just really taking a read. Yeah. If there's any questions, then I thought I missed anything off there. So I've tried to space it out evenly across the year. Um, of course, noting election date is the 8th of October. And so then having to work around that date, boards and back. Which is the time when you must come back on the night. Um, has there been any, um, I mean, the, I know the local government review is uh, I think your initial report or something or whatever it is is out has come out. It's come out, yes. Yeah. Um there's no impact um by that at the no. moment, is there? Not at this stage. No. I don't anticipate there being a change in time no. like there could be. Well but no. it would be they've got to have a very good reason to change that. Right. And there has been an executive order I think there's been a what? I think it's an executive order. There's been something put in place just in case. Order and council. Order and council. And but that's for that's for uh, COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it's COVID. Yeah. It's yeah. very difficult for the government to change election dates. Um, we have. Could I just make a small suggestion that we fix the typo for February, which says Monday the first, and I think it's Tuesday the first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking they going, what are we going to be meeting on Monday? Why only one Monday? <laughs> there might be a Monday, there might be a Monday meeting if there's a clash with the hearings. Committee. Right, yeah. I'm just looking at yeah. that and I'm pretty sure my calendar tells me Tuesday is the first rather than yeah. Monday. <laughs> You'll say that too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah you've got to push your dates around a wee bit. <laughs> so if there's a Tuesday the first. Oh February, yes. Yeah, Tuesday yeah. the first of February. Yeah. Thank you. That's so okay. good. Um, I'll move A and B. Second Roger. In favour? Aye. Okay. Against? Carried. Thank you very much. Your Worship. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I attended the opening of Three Kings Cherries Packing Shed on the Clyde Hill. Absolutely massive building. Not great to see big building projects going forward in the community. Um, but looking at the industry overall, I'm not. Um, three cherries in particular. Um, I'm not long after sat through a central table labour management governance group where everyone's sweating profusely about how we're going to get staff members this year for mm. our cherry season coming up. So I don't know where the break point is going to be in that, but it's 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 going to be a pretty tough season. Um, I had a mock meeting in Cambridge alongside Martin just to provide some assistance with understanding the effects of the Water Services Act on small communities that are not on council scheme, such as Cambridge. And uh, I'll be attending a meeting out there alongside Mary Flannery from AWS. I did a, I joined them in a road show uh, three months ago. We went around and explained the bills, so we're going to go and sort of talk to Cambridge. It's not really council staff. Other than if they decide they don't want to do it, council gets it. So it's been time to show that it's actually not too hard. Um, like so many others, I was very disappointed and remain so not to have had a Blossom Festival this year, but history will show the committee's decision not to go ahead to the event to be the correct one in terms of the limit of people being 100 at the time, which would have been probably twice as many as we would have got in the park given the state of the weather that day. So it really wasn't a genius move, and I know Martin was playing with his report was because he wasn't wearing his white pen in my hat. That was because I wasn't wearing my white pen in my hat. <laughs> I don't doubt that for a moment. I, um, I enjoyed meeting the new CEO of Business South. So Business South, formerly the Otago Chamber of Commerce, which has merged with the Employers Association. Um, and I've uh, had some fairly significant concerns about that merger. They've been alleviated somewhat now that the Chamber brand has been able to be um, retained. So I'm a bit more at ease now. And also, um, sure the Boston Festival Golf Tournament, which they put on. I've been running that for years. So that meant here, even though the festival didn't. Although it only happened uh, last weekend. And I attended and spoke briefly at the opening of the restored Lord Station building on the rail trail of um, Saturday or Sunday. I can't it. Really great time for the Lord of Community. You know, the, the, if you don't know the history, the, the station was the station, and then the train stopped, and the track got pulled up, and the station got lugged over the other side of the road by the store with a view to one day being of some use. And then the store was sold, and 
other owners came in and they went, gee, wouldn't it be good to put it back <laughs> and um, do it up? So it's not that quite where it um, originally was, but it's been 10 years of ukulele festivals and quiz nights and raffles and everything to come up with the money to move it and restore it. And it really, uh, I just think it's an absolute testament to the order and wider community that they've done. And it was just as funny as Shannon from the ODT got a photo, but I haven't seen it yet because we had the, the guest speaker over the side and the hall behind them, or the station behind them. And then you had a crowd of about 40 people standing or seated on this side of the trail. And in the middle of the speeches, two random people came by. <laughs> the and they were all, came, you know, they were a lot of guests, so they were playing from out of town. And without anybody saying a word or instigating it, everybody just stood in front. <laughs> <laughs> and they were riding through going, what the bloody hell is going on here? And they, it was just wonderful. So, um, yeah, really, I just did just a great occasion. So that's, that's my lot for the last six years. There's a lot of that was from my lot, I suppose. Mm. Has there been any um, significant stuff with the three quarters since we last reported? So we've, council were given, it's what I've talked about is the eight weeks, but it won't make that 10 weeks to the end of September to go back to the government and comment on their draft proposal and say, here's the things that worry us, here are the things that need greater clarification. So we did that and those, there was about nine or 10 of them, I think, um, fairly technical points that we made to say, here's the things that worry us are available on the council website. We now sit and wait for Cabinet to consider all of those or for you know the, the bureaucrats to consider it all, perhaps jiggery-pokery with it, change a few things. Um, Minister Mahuja has made it very plain that I have a meeting alongside the table in South of Mears two weeks ago with her. Um, she's made it very plain that she recognises that a lot of the concerns are in common. Our specific meeting was in terms of saying, you're now going to make some form of an announcement late October You've always said you want this match sorted by the end of the year. We cannot do a consultation at that time. So that and, and also you don't do it with the about uh, arguing the case. That was what that meeting was for. So um, a lot of councils or a number of councils took that opportunity to say we're out. Awfully difficult to be out of a draft, in my view, and the council agreed with that. But whilst we've got, and, and it was just a wee bit disappointing that there was no media in the room. Um, the day we had the council meeting, because we went around the room at length and councillors had, had a good opportunity to speak. And I would say that the report had one uh, media thing there would have said we were clearly negative on it, a lot of concerns. So um, we now wait and see what happens next. Um, for me, I'm, I'm concerned that there were councils that I think made decisions that didn't need to be made. I'm always for making a decision when you have to, not beforehand, because you're going to learn a bit between those two time frames. Um, just say you're out of the draft leaves you in no man's land when it comes to the final product. Do you then go, oh, we prefer this, we're back in, well, what's the point in the first place where you predetermined yourself? Um, and in the meantime, we've got significant ructions going on with an LGNZ of you know, Timaru District Councils pulled out of LGNZ, mm -hmm. um, which begs the question, what next? Uh, because I, I know quite damn well, I sat, as I say, amongst seven years Talking directly to Minister Mahuta, would I be doing that representing just 0.4% of New Zealand's population? I do not believe I would be. Um, we also have Waimakariri District Council that have put a paper uh, to LGNZ seeking support that LGNZ pulls out of the heads of Bruna that it um, entered into with the government, which disturbs me deeply as well because I've gone through the constitution. The people who had the delegated authority, being the National Council, to do it, did it. So again, I say, what next? If we then, through ructions internally, pull out of that, who does that leave? Local government in New Zealand as an honourable partner in further negotiations, in particular, the future for local government. So I've never seen the sector in such a state of turmoil. Um, I think there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people who are looking at next October, and there's quite a few people who are looking at the middle of the year after that in terms of their own um, ambitions towards Wellington. And there's a lot of people who are genuinely concerned and the fact's just not handling it the same way as the, um, the doer step-by-step -step people of Central Otago District Council. But it's a, uh, it's a hell of a time. The, the second question I guess I've got in terms of feedback um, is what the process would be or how we would be uh, go through the consultation process with the community. Yeah, um, because you know, I, I suspect that all of us have received 
considerable feedback mm. on on what the DODC should be doing. Um, but um, yeah, so that what process do you think the um, should be followed to get effective community consultation? And in some ways, what's the point in having it if yeah. Mahuta says, I don't care, this is happening anyway? Uh, look, I think if, if Minister Mahuta were to say that, she would be saying that before rather than after. Yes, yeah, the consultation with that. Um, so what would the reaction of the council be? Well, I'm, I'm not asking for a predetermination, mm. but if, if there is a mandating by the minister, what for us? Well, it's been you've, got got a, you've got a majority government who passes the law. Yeah. You've, you've got a problem though with it, isn't it, with the Local Government Act at the moment is that you've you, got a majority of government that will erase Section 130 of the Local yeah, Government Act. Yeah, and, that's that. And ending um, fraud and significance and engagement policy as well. I'm just saying. I'll just throw that. Throw which, that which, yeah. It's interesting because a lot of people, uh, as you will, I'm sure, all got emails saying about this is an attack on democracy, but this is actually what happens when you have the majority of the government doing what it believes is its purpose. So, yeah, and I think the eruptions from council and from the community would be absolutely colossal, but the government's now in a situation where it either backs down and goes, oh, we'll forget about that. They don't struggle against that kind of thing. They go through the consultation where they know what the answer's going to be and they're not going to be what they like, but they mandate. So, I don't know, we'll wait and see, but, um, and when it comes to how would we handle the consultation if we were still in that seat, well, that would have to come through council, but my view personally at this stage would be that what we've done with our LTPs and that form of consultation works brilliantly well with drop-ins rather than town hall meetings, um, and with, that's why we've, we've gone to the links we have to try to get the information to the public in the eight or ten week period so that we've got a basis to start from to go here's what it's all about but unfortunately even with the videos the first couple had over a thousand people watch the last one where it's actually starting to get interesting and as you previously had a couple hundred so i think people made their minds up did you read the opinion piece in this morning's ADT? Mm. i thought it summed it up pretty well pretty well no, it was, yeah it's, it's an opinion piece it's point of view the, the what's been lost in this explosion is this that bar royal sent water services bill has been passed mm. it's now an act and it's going to bring a huge amount of responsibilities fiscally and in terms of liabilities on a lot of councils mm -hmm. in terms of drinking water we're in pretty good shape there in 2018 ltp we mm. budgeted it to be compliant with the drinking water standards before this process began um so you know we can handle that it's the wastewater coming in the rivers, which mm. is abhorrent to yeah. uh, many and a growing number of people, despite how well we treat it, that's going to hurt us. It's the absolutely unknown number of the likes of Canberra and small mm. suppliers where we have two or three, or, or Tony Lepper today, we have two or three of those go, we're out. Mm. It's, it, even even at, a, at, a, at, a, at an ability to do the money to get the water to be, we to cut the stack. Yeah. Phenomenal. And, be, and, it's going to be really interesting to see if what central government's plan B, if there is a plan B. It's going to be really interesting. Where it, going to yeah, be. You go on that, that opinion piece which compared um, <clears throat> the three waters to previous Labour governments mm. in um, foreshore and seabed, which cost the government. Is there an appetite for change? Um, yeah, not yet, there isn't. I think the message has been lost really regrettably that change is happening whether you've got an appetite for it or not. Yeah. The cost of your three waters is going to go up, and all the reforms are about is how you how it's best to minimise that increase. But isn't isn't one of the things um, at the key of this three waters thing has always been the lack of performance from the regulatory authority. Yeah, I think it's and, and I mean all that's being all that's being proposed, well, one of the central points in this whole three waters thing seems to be the replacement of the public health authority, I think it's currently. Um, uh, Ministry of Health, yeah. Ministry of Health um, to this new uh, regulatory authority. And I was going to 
segue from there into the performance of the Electricity Authority, as we know, mm. who have recently awarded um, oh, Aurora, not. which I was, very, I was very pleased to see your comments about that. Right. Um, but I am still absolutely astounded that um, somebody within government has not taken the Electricity Authority into, into task for their complete abrogation of their roles and responsibilities. And, and the um, and the Commons Commission, which and is then, why yes, one yep. of the things that the Council put up as a, as a imperative to us is something along the lines of the Water Ombudsman that would watch over not just the entities, but the regulators. Yep. But I think it's, I think it's some, not some, that's the wrong way to say, sorry, that's some through. To say that it's just because the regulator didn't do the job is part of the equation. So for me, it's a three-legged stool. You'd have the, the, the drinking water standards that were never enforced. <coughs> now that is, yes, that is a government derogation of duty, but it's also councils. We knew bloody fine damn well that those standards were there and we should be adhering to them. And I'm proud of this council, uh, the one before it in 2018, that moved forward with that. So I'm going to call that a 50-50 split. But there has been an awful lot of infrastructure that has not been invested in by councils throughout the country. That is the biggest hurdle. That's the biggest problem. The absolute infrastructure gap, um, the funding gap for it, and also the complete lack of depreciation in some cases, mm. where you, you're There's just seven, you're firing off tomorrow. And a lot of that comes down to boards that are based on elections rather than on competency, yeah. I'm afraid. Because there's a lot of councils, I'm extremely proud of this district, the ones that I've been mere of and the ones that went before, who didn't take that attitude. And if you want an example of that, it's putting water meters in the ground. Every single water tap in New, in New Zealand should have water meters on it if we're even starting to take this seriously. Us and Kapiti are the two small councils that do it. You know why that is, don't? The public don't like it, which mm -hmm. is code for I don't want to get voted out. Yeah. So, and, and the third one is the wastewater going in. So, mm -hmm. but, but the blame game is not going to fix the problem that the cost of going through the roof. And what is the best way to limit the damage? All due respect, Your Worship. Gone on too long. Thank you. <laughs> I know you're a time watcher. You've had your five minutes. Oh, okay. more than my five minutes. And um, happy to answer any other questions. <laughs> as long as they're not about water, because we could be here until the cows come home. You know, always happy to discuss. I think, and you know, I've got plenty of opportunity to make an appointment and have a cup of coffee with Your Worship. Um, I'll move your report. Thank you, Matt. All those in favour of accepting it? Yes. Seconded? Roger. All in favour? Aye. Larry. <laughs> um, my chair, um, I should mention our trip out to St. Baffin's. The email we got back thanking us both for the time and effort we took to explain it was genuinely lovely. Yeah. They really appreciated the fact that we we'd gone out of our way to talk through a very complex and convoluted um, issue. Um, and yeah, it was, they, and they weren't growly at us because they knew we had nothing. They just needed some some clarification and put it into the lay and it was it was really good. Um, and and I say but then again with with my cheers hat on. It's been three waters, three waters, three waters, and then um, Blossom Festival. I was fifteen when I ran away to Dunedin once the call had been made to cancel it. And as you would have read the paper, that there was no issues with making that call. It was the right call to make. The beautiful thing about making that call is what happened afterwards. It just you know seemed four square festooned and. Pink blossoms mm, brought yeah. tears to my eyes. Getting invited down to the terrace school to see the mini parade with, with seven, mm. year seven and eight kids did was just, they pulled that together in two days yeah. and it was a real effort. And then following up, I get home that night and, and you know, Range put some posts up on, on, on our socials about that. And then this other one comes out from Greg Street, totally random out of left field. They've just gone ahead and done their own thing. <laughs> and because Greg Street being a, um, a cul de sac, uh, they just closed and they've got a piper living there and they did a senior queen competition and they did their own mini parade and it's it's um it just shows where blossom festival sits in this community mm -hmm. it's just, and, and those three actions really brought that home and it was improved um and it bodes well for next year because the seeds have been signed so bigger brighter and better and um <clears throat> 
and from a personal level, the amount of support that I've been given um, from individuals around this town has been absolutely outstanding. You know, it's, I was getting lots of cuddles in the supermarket. Whether you want them or not. Pardon? Whether you want them or not. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's basically been my life in the last six weeks. So I'll move my report. And Russell will yep, yes, yep. and all can play that eye. Now, Nicholas, I'm going to start off with Charlene on the can. Hey. Um, much like um, Martin's report, Blossy obviously has been dictating a lot of my life over the last month. And um, again, just want to note the committee here and their commitment to really wanting the festival to go ahead, but knowing that we had to do what was right for our community. And um, yeah, just amazing people who have given so much time uh, towards that festival and felt um, the heartache really of not being able to offer that to our community. So yeah, so it was a big time over that. The other thing that's been a big issue um, is vaping policies. And so with the Coda Group, uh, we've been supporting lots of different people around vaping policies, including the high school. Um, and the latest issue around vaping is on buses. Um, so we're just trying to support some of the bus companies around that. Um, I also have attended meetings with the reducing of drug and alcohol harm in our communities. That's with the Waitaki Safer Communities Group um, and just sort of really learning about some of the stuff that they have been doing in the Clutha District Council around um, meth and the impact on our families and the different groups that they have been able to set up is just fantastic. And something completely left field, but September was the Blood and Leukemia Foundation uh, month, and I got to be the poster child this year. So, um, yeah, so that's about it. I am currently sitting in beautiful Kaipui uh, in the Waimakariri and, um, yeah, enjoying some good Canterbury hospitality and weather. <laughs> well done. Well done. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I'll move all the members of ports. So I'll go around to my left now, starting off with Roger. Been to a number of house meetings, a REIT board meeting, <clears throat> ADMI board meeting, um, Central Otago Dis District Arts Trust board meeting, and also the uh, their AGM. I um, went to, a, we had a special meeting at the Manabu and Recreation Reserve because of the problems with uh, controlling rabbits out there. So we did a little bit of um, thinking about how to uh, handle that. Uh, U3A, that's been a bit of a disaster mm. this year. With, uh, so a lot of work goes into preparing and to have to cancel uh, six of the talks was um, very disappointing. And I also went to the Leaning Rock Retirement Village AGM. Um, they attracted approximately half the number of people who went there last year. <coughs> I was the only elected member there, and so I was the, the centre of, the, of their uh, attacks. Um, but that was which made it interesting. Uh, and I, all I could do, of course, was provide answers to their, uh, their questions and, and as honestly as I could. There's a with a problem with their uh, the whole communication. They advertise it as being at the Alexandra Community Centre Centennial Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexandra Community Centre, of course, is the Memorial mm -hmm. Centre. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, even when it got to actually sending any messages out, they, they didn't do a particularly <laughs> good job. One and one other thing that I might mention, um, I made my contribution to the Eat Taste Central campaign. Um, probably it's some damage to my waistline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm still contributing to that. <laughs> um, uh, I have been to a few meetings, Balanced Cottage meeting, 
um, the main discussion was around having an open day at the cottage with um, with um, an associated market or not, and that was cancelled as we were still in level two. So that was following on from Blossom Festival cancellations. Um, Alex Community House meeting, <laughs> not Alex Community Centre. Um, the chair and the and one of the board reps are attending a governance skills course at the moment, and so they're really excited about that, and they're going to share some um, information about how to be better governors um, at our November meeting. So that's cool. Otherwise, we're progressing, or they are progressing with their FOIA modifications, and a funding application has been, or a couple of funding applications have been made to support that. Um, I met with the guardians of Lake Dunstan, who received in March, I think it was, um, around about a million dollars from Linz to clean up between. I know it's out of our area, but there's sort of there's some crossover there as well with what they're talking about. <laughs> they are proposing to clean up and um, beautify an area between the Lowburn Dam Bridge and Dead Man's Bridge. Um, so quite a quite a long area, but basically mm. along the along the lake, the shoreline and along the lake front. And so just supporting them a little bit, thinking, helping them think about how they can connect with the community and working with schools. Um, we had our meeting today with Ray Wright um, down at Balance Cottage to look at the proposed biodiversity border idea. Um, and that was a really great meeting and felt good in terms of being able to do mm. that site visit and actually taste and feel how it could be. And so it was great. And item of interest, um, at, at the very end of September, I went to Queenstown to listen to Darren Rewe speak, who is my tahu. Um, and he was speaking on behalf of Catalyst Trust, and his um, talk was titled The Three Waves of Iwi, and it was a really interesting hour and a half, fully immersive storytelling, um, helping break down where those traditional names had come from, and some of the loss of, of traditional names because there's been three tribes who have come through the South Island. Um, so yeah, he spoke around the knowledge that he had around the Waitaha, the Ngāti Māmui, and most recently Naitahu, and it was really, really good. Um, and he is very open to coming and speaking to groups, so he's well worth, well worth getting in touch. Did he saw them in the Naitahu picking world? Oh, I didn't ask him that question. <laughs> Not sure, but his his role is a storyteller. Oh, okay. So yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, he's great. Mm. Mm. That's me. Come on. I went to the last council meeting, but we can have a industry thing very busy. Covid restraints and responsibility for pre -teach. I attended the pre-agenda leads meeting for the planning and review tree portfolio. Um, it was before the last council meeting. Um, some interesting discussion here was um, a report that we made a decision on about 50 hectares of land in Cromwell that's going to be zoned industrial around the cemetery there. It was um, part of the master plan process. Um, I sat in on the September hearings panel meeting. Um, that was an interesting one. I hadn't sat in on a meeting on a hearing to do with the Reserves Act before. It was about the um, the Greenway beside New World in Cromwell. That um, New World is is asking whether they can purchase part of that Greenway. So there's a few submitters that um, that were against that purchase, um, and it was interesting seeing how how although it was a hearing on the Reserves Act, there was also some resource consenting um, considerations that, that needed to be taken into account as well. They'll, they'll be taken into account of this when the new world come back to us and apply for resource consent. But some of the issues raised by submitters were resource consent issues, not Reserves Act. So it was, it was yeah. It was, the two sort of cross over a wee bit. It was, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and then I attended the last council business meeting um, and following that we had an LTP workshop um, with the survey results from the LTP um, and the discussion, some of the, or some interesting discussion was around um, reviewing whether submitters can speak to their submissions or not. Um, 
and then we had a workshop on the, the spatial plan or the district plan changes um, to the spatial plan, did similar to what we discussed we heard today from me. Hmm. Right. Um, certainly had uh, Heritage Trust uh, meeting. The Heritage Trust, I could say, is in um, good form. Um, very active um, trustees uh, and a lot of work going on. And for those that haven't caught up with the latest um, edition of the Heritage Trust, I was going to say newsletter. It isn't a newsletter, it's a little booklet. Um, I think it's called the summer edition there, but um, very, very good one indeed. Um, balance meetings, um, uh, been to the Clyde Museum meetings. Um, we've got um, an exhibition coming up at the Clyde Museum when it opens, um, aimed at children. And um, even though we're sort of on there as non-voting people, it doesn't remove you from getting tasks delivered to you. And so my task is doing the kids story about um, a thing called a ditty box. Um, and apparently the first ever Clyde principal, who was a guy, Joseph Stevens, um, and he had this thing called a ditty box, which is a wooden suitcase about that, by that, by that. And it was donated to the Clyde Museum. And the story is that he, um, at about 12 or 13, went on a sailing ship. And there was a mutiny on the sailing ship in the Bay of Biscay. And the captain and the two boys on board were thrown overboard. And he swam to shore uh, to France, um, clutching this ditty box and whatever. And so when I saw the story and thought, my first question was, what was the name of the ship? And um, so I did some more inquiries and luckily I went to Billy Tohill, who's the repository of anything and everything. And she said, basically, it's all um, not true. And um, she's given me rafts of um, information which shows that it couldn't possibly have taken place. And it's one of these stories it's just along the lines of what I make up and tell my grandkids. Um, <laughs> um, yes, yes, that was but anyway, uh, so it's going to be an urban myth. And it's going to be an urban myth. Yep. Um, anyway, that was that was one. Um, I spoke to. I don't know how many people know about the one day school here in Alexandra, um, but it's a it's a school that operates on Wednesdays. I think it's every Wednesday in the old um, COEC or Central Otago Education Centre um, things run by a lady called oh, Jean, Jean, Jean Chamberlain. Jean Chamberlain. Uh, very, very nice lady. But these these kids come from all throughout Central. Um, uh, there was some, some from Wanaka, there's some kids from uh, Roxburgh, Alexandra, Clyde, wherever. And they're generally um, pretty gifted kids. And um, anyway, uh, Jen had contacted me and she wanted me to talk to the kids over a couple of sessions, which I did. And I found it particularly rewarding. Um, it was really, really great. Um, I've, I had the other thing I've been doing was having um, conversation, email conversations mainly with um, um, Tim and Martin regarding um, cricket and uh, the existence or non-existence of TV towers at um, at the Queenstown uh, Event Centre, um, but it was good that we were able to confirm that there wasn't indeed um, these towers in existence. Um, I don't know what the situation um, is going to be, but certainly the um, the previous contract with Sky was that Sky was um, responsible for the cost of any television infrastructure um, and some amazement has been expressed to me that in any new contract with Spark, uh, that the same sort of condition wouldn't exist. Um, and why, why a broadcasting organisation could get to the point of offloading their costs onto somebody else is quite beyond me. Um, 
And um, I think tomorrow, I just mentioned something that's about to happen, but we're about to have a, um, a, a meeting with um, the people from Pioneer over the um, the forthcoming uh, hospice fundraising dinner, which will be in March of next year. Um, and looking very forward to um, seeing the really great community support that we get for that. So that's mine. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. I'll move those members' reports. Can I have a seconder? Anna, thank you. All in favour, aye. Against, carried. Next item is page 303. It's the governance report. Um, there being no matters arising from those reports, I'll move the acceptance. Seconder, yep. Ian, thank you. All in favour? Aye. Um, Page 322, the date of our next meeting. It is noted. Yeah. And I will move we go into public excluded. Cut a seconder. Yeah. Okay. Russell, all in favour? No. Right. Yeah. And we'll just pause. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll pause. We'll be right. Okay.